The Phillies stacking up their rotation. Where does that leave Cleveland? It's a case of what about us? What about us? I'm Lauren Shahadi. He's Eric Mack. This is your pitching planner. You've come to the right place. Cliff Lee dealt to the Phillies, hopefully picking up that under 500 record we talked about yesterday. That leaves the question, who replaces him? Well, that's the important thing in fantasy. you got to react to news. And now, after Cliff Lee gets dealt, the Indians go back to Fausto Comona, a former 17-game winner. He had his struggles earlier this year. But he's been better in AAA, and I think you can get some run out of Fausto Carmona in deeper leagues. You know, he's probably not going to have a winning record because the Indians are going to be trading off even more pieces, and uh, they're probably not going to score a lot of runs for him. But if he can pitch effectively, he can be a sleeper in deeper leagues. So this deal pads the NL East leader. That question remains a bunch of talent. Who's in, who's out, Emac? Right. There's a lot of people in the Phillies rotation right now, and Pedro Martinez was trying to get in. It doesn't look like he's going to make it now with the addition of Cliff Lee. When you look at their rotation, you got Cole Hamels at the top, you got Cliff Lee, Joe Blanton, Jamie Moyer, and then Jay Hay Happ has been awesome. Um, and then so that leaves out Pedro Martinez. You might have to work in long relief, maybe be a spot starter, a number six starter if they decide to go to a six man rotation. And then Roger, Rodrigo Lopez, who hasn't been bad, he'll be in the long relief and then in the bullpen. Here on out. The rich get richer. Yeah. I tell you what. So the Phillies are toying with their eliteness. Is that a word? That's perfect word. Kind of. I'm using it today. Let's talk about some elite prospects. We spoke about Bud Norris the other day, and you think good things are to come. Yeah. Bud Norris, he can join the Astros rotation as early as next week, maybe even be a two-star pitcher. And then you got the Matt, Matt Latos, who's already arrived. He had a slow first start. He had a better second start. And then he was absolutely dominant, one hit in seven innings in his next start. And then Chris Tillman just got the call. He's an elite 21-year-old pitching prospect, a key piece in the Eric Bedard trade uh, with Adam Jones and George Sherrill. The Orioles have a great makeup from the, that trade. And Chris Tillman, after his bad start, Bad debut start, three homers. Um, he's going to be awesome. He's going to be very good, and you can use him in mixed leagues. You know, they're not going to score a lot of runs for him, maybe, and maybe not get a lot of win potential, but he can be dominant just like Latos was, one hit in seven innings. What about these next guys? They're not so dominant because these are your aces that are banged up that might not take you where you want to go. And right. the first on the list is Roy Oswald. Yeah, Oswald, you're going to have to watch him through this weekend. He says he wants to make his start on Sunday. The Astros sorely need to have his front lines. Uh, starter status in their lineup um, with the pennant race now. And then Liriano, he has another uh, problem with the forearm. He's had surgery on it. It's taken a year and a half plus for him to get his velocity back to where it was. It still hasn't gotten there. And so you have to be very cautious with Liriano. Track his news through the weekend. He's going to throw some bullpen sessions and try to start next Wednesday. I probably wouldn't trust him in most leagues. Maybe just sit him down for a week. Well, you're going to trust these next guys. It's time for your must-start, two-start pitchers. And first on this list is Randy Wells, a rookie with a fine ERA and advisable yeah. two-start pitcher. Yeah, I think he's a must-start at this point. Randy Wells has been outstanding. The Cubs are hot. You know, Soriano's gotten hot. Aramis Ramirez has gotten hot. Randy Wells has been awesome. He shut out innings his last time out. And then you look at his matchups at Cincinnati, at Colorado. I know Colorado's a current uh, wild card contender, but the Cubs are hot, and Randy Wells is going to be a big time winner. His ownership is shooting through the roof right now. A guy's ownership that's going down, Irvin Santana, he has been awful. Uh, most of this season, his ERA is over seven. He's allowing five or six runs a start. I don't think you can trust Irvin Santana, especially when you look on that schedule, you see Texas on, on tap. Well, from a solid ERA to a ballooning one with those guys just like that. Now it's time for your two-start sleepers. And Luke Hoshaver, first on this list, a career-high 13 strikeouts. Is that indicative of what's to come, Matt? Yeah, he's been hot. Won his past four starts. Luke Hoshaver, I would trust him in deeper leagues, especially when you look at his matchups next week versus Seattle, a weak offense, and Oakland. Two very good matchups for a guy who's hot, and the former number one overall pick is finally hitting stride. He looks like he can start in mixed leagues now. And then you got Chris Tillman, the elite 21-year-old pitching prospect who can throw gas. I know his first start was unimpressive with the three solo homers, but he's going to be knocking people out. He's going to strike out a batter per inning. He's going to have a low ERA and whip. And if the Orioles can get him any kind of run support, he can win for you. He was definitely blowing away his competition in the minors. So yep. we'll see how he does up here. And he's 21 years old. Plenty of time. Right. Do you remember when you were 21 years old? <laughs> a long, a long time, time ago. ago. Galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. Thank you for watching Everything Fantasy Baseball. You know where to turn. We'll see you soon.